Adventure. Mountain Life on W Four C Y Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the Adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. This is Pipe Man here on the Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with... Mothica. Yes, here at <laughs> Rocklahoma. And Oklahoma is like your home state. It is. Yeah, I was surprised a lot of people didn't know I was born and raised in Oklahoma. So, born in Tulsa, raised in Oklahoma City. So, when I got an email to play, I was like, of course, I have to come right back and, yeah. Well, you don't necessarily look like... What people outside of Oklahoma would think of Oklahoma? Well, I definitely always had a similar style. Like, I was, like, the only girl with blue hair in high school. And then I would draw on myself a Sharpies before I could get tattoos. And then as soon as I turned 18, they turned into tattoos. See, that proves that, you, you know, when you're, like, that age, people are like, oh, it's just a phase. But if you're doing that, that kind of proves that that's really what you wanted to do. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad I had to wait till I was 18 to get the tattoos I wanted to get, because now maybe I pick better ideas. Yeah. But I definitely always was drawn to rock music, warp Tour, and that music in high school. So playing this is super fun. So have you attended Rocklahoma as an attendee since you're from here? I've never been to Rocklahoma. At all? Yeah, ever. Yeah. So first time was uh, opening the main stage. Yeah. Wow. And how'd that go? (laughs) It was awesome. Yeah. I have my parents here, family, my like old teachers. So I didn't even have time to be nervous. I just was thrown on and played real quick. And I gave a guitar away to one of the people in the front rows. Nice. So I had my whole band sign it. And the girl that sang every lyric is going home. So that's how you picked it was the one that sang every lyric? Yeah, we I wanted to give it to like a kid, you know, yeah. someone who was like learning how to play guitar, but that, this girl it would change yeah. their life, you know? Yeah, and I feel bad the girl I gave it to has to go on a plane, so she'll have to figure out how to get it on the airplane now. <laughs> I'm sure she will. <laughs> yeah. But it was super fun. What was her reaction? Oh, she was crying. Yeah. Nice. So I saw her singing every lyric and uh you know, I was just like, okay, she she's going to get this signed guitar. Um, I wish I, I had the idea to have like way more guitars, but that that's just not <laughs> right. <laughs> realistic. Yeah, you can't really give out like maybe if I'm headlining, we'll do like, you know, four Cor- guitars. <laughs> Corey Taylor can do that. But <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it was, yeah we were like just a little sprinkle of a free guitar. But that that is just way cool because. I mean, that changes this person's life. And, like, how does that make you feel when you see that look on their face? Well, I mean, it happened today when I was singing Forever 15 and I tell this speech about, like, you know, depression and what I've been through. And if I make eye contact with someone who's crying, I instantly start crying. So that happened to me. And I could barely make it through the song because I was just feeling what they're feeling. And so... Yeah, it's it's hard because I'm I'm sensitive and I like I like pick up on other people's emotions a lot, so I have to try to not look at anyone. Right, and you know that's why you're an artist. Yeah, I mean, and that's what makes a good artist. Because listen, you could write a song that means something to you, but it doesn't have to mean the exact same thing to the other person. But when they read the lyrics or hear the lyrics. They do relate somehow. When you force it and you're trying to do that, that doesn't happen. Uh, Yeah, I definitely have learned that, like, you need to be more specific in your lyrics. Because if you're too, you know, it doesn't hit as hard when it's generic. So I have some, like, even, uh, you know, we're here in, like, prior Oklahoma, which is close to Tulsa where I grew up. And I have a new song on my new album that's not out yet. And I, I mentioned, I talk about Tulsa in it. And, like... 
to write like a diary is important to me to make yeah. the emotions of the song. And then when I perform it, I kind of have to turn that off. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd just be crying the whole time. Right? Yeah. yeah. I've thought about that, actually. That's funny you bring that up because there's some things you sing about that you wouldn't talk about in real life, but you'll get up on stage and sing it. Oh, yeah. I think uh, a lot of musicians are better at writing lyrics about how they're feeling than maybe even saying them. And Of like, course. You would expect musicians to be more um, eloquent but some people just can only put it in a guitar chord or in a metaphor. And the way I look at it, like even at, as doing radio, there's stuff I say on the radio I would never say in real life because I just, to me, in my head, I'm just talking into a mic. I'm not even talking to anybody, so I'm just talking to myself. So the stuff inside my head comes out on the mic. But oh, in yeah. real life, the stuff in my head doesn't come out there. Oh, but yeah. It's just a mic, so I'm talking to myself. Oh, yeah, and I, and I definitely know that because, you know, I make a lot of, like, TikTok content, YouTube, and, like, that's just me and a camera. Right. So it's only when I'm at a festival or at a show where I see, oh, there's actually, like, people behind my phone. <laughs> right, right. Like, I'm just making everything in a vacuum, and then this is the cool moment when I get to meet someone's kid who, you know, was a fan or whatever. But otherwise, I'm like, oh, I'm just oversharing and trauma dumping into myself right now. Right, because... <laughs> You know, even with a big crowd like at Rocklahoma, when you're an artist, when you get up on stage, like something happens in your brain that you kind of tune out that you're talking to all these people. Because so many artists really are shy, but when they get on stage, there's something that switches in the brain. Same for me. Like if I get up on stage I'm, I'm, and I'm speaking or something, I look at all these people and I'm not really thinking they're there it's kind of like i'm just in this zone well, playing live is probably the the hardest thing for me because i think i had it took me years to get over being embarrassed because yeah. there's photos and videos of you sounding off key looking awkward and so all my early show videos you can tell how self-conscious i am i'm fixing my hair i'm like all closed off and then now i just have to like you know, I do my little stretches and I'm like, I'm going to pretend I'm the most badass right now. There you go. <laughs> and then just like, let it happen. Yeah. And you know, I don't know if you know this, but perfect example of that is James Hetfield, Metallica. Because in the beginning, he wouldn't come to the front. He was not a frontman. Yeah. And like, he didn't even, if you talk to him now, he thinks he sucked at singing back then. So it's like he took a lot of years to yeah. have the confidence in his abilities that, you know, we're our own worst critic. Oh, yeah. And especially when you're playing these early slots, broad daylight, right? Just, you know, in the sun sweating. And I kind of am just thinking, oh, I can't wait till the day I have a fog machine and lights behind me. It's the little things, <laughs> right? That's when you, when you don't have to zoom in and circle your name on a poster because it's big enough to be read. You know, those are like the little, you know, highlights I look forward to, hopefully. <laughs> totally. And then it's like, OK, so you're you're on stage doing this thing and you notice all your screw ups, but the crowd doesn't. But you think they all do. The, and they're looking at you and you're thinking, oh, they know I screwed up. I'm sure other musicians can tell, but <laughs> right. But luckily, the things that I like, you know, I mess up one part of the set, but I make it up by giving go. more energy at the end. So when you, you kind of get used to it, like I just played um, in the UK for the first time last weekend. Nice. So we didn't get to do a warm up, sound check, anything. We just went straight into it, and now I know that like. Yeah, whatever happens, happens, and it, there's always another show you can be better in. There you go. So how do we tell people to reach out to you, check out all your stuff, Oh yeah, buy your merch, all that good stuff? Well, I'm working on new merch because the new album is going to start coming out in October. Just so, in time for my birthday. Uh, Mothica.com or at Mothica on Instagram. 
And I'm really excited for Halloween because the whole album, I mean, it's always Halloween for me and my music. <laughs> right. But I'm definitely leaning into that. And so it's going to be a very spooky next few months. <laughs> nice. So tell us more about the new album. <gasps> it's hard. I don't know what to say about it, but, oh, it's a visual album. So I'm doing Ooh. 12 music videos. Nice. So it's going to be like kind of like a short film or my version of one, you know. I love it. I keep calling it the cheapest visual album ever because you can't (laughs) compare it to like Beyonce Lemonade or, you know, these big budget things. Right. Sometimes, though, (laughs) the short budgets do the best. Yeah. And I've just had this uh, idea for so long. And now I'm really like we just shot five of them and then we're about to finish it off. So every song will have a video, which is super exciting to me. I love that, too, because I come from a time where like the music's a full experience you know yeah and we've gotten too much to where people just go through the tracks track 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 i used to sit with my headphones look at the album cover all the art the lyrics any inserts like and just study the whole thing and my mind would take off on a journey somewhere else i remember that buying cds and uh that's why i love designing album packaging and i'm already like thinking it's funny because i'm like most people maybe don't even have a record player but i'm like i want to do like you know the custom shaped ones and like uh i love visual art make a vinyl in the in the shape of a moth yes that would be amazing yeah there's so much fun and so i'm just finishing that and then so this is my last show for the next like couple months and then you'll hear some new music from Uh me I love it. Cool. Any final words you want to leave the listeners with? I don't know. Stream Mothica for perfect skin and health. (laughs) See, those are good words, though. Because, like, there's a buzz where I'm just going to do that just because I need health. Yeah. 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 So funny. You are an amazing artist. I'm so glad you were here at Rock, Oklahoma. Thanks for having me again. It's always nice to talk to you. Always nice to have you here. Thanks for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.